How are you, my friends? This video is presenting nine old exams questions related to transformations of functions. Shifting, reflection, stretching, shrinking, even and odd functions. So these questions, they cover lectures 31 and 32. Let's go directly to question number one. We have a function f of x and we need to find r of x. If f of x reflected in the x-axis, then shifted after that three units to the right, then four units upward. Graph it and find the range. Easy. So we have f of x is equal to x squared, that's a parabola. Reflected in the x-axis, it becomes minus outside. So it will be reflected in the x-axis. Shifted to the right three units, there is an x minus three for sure squared because we have the same function f parabola. Four units upward, there is a plus four up. We graph it, this is the graph. So it was there, parabola at zero, reflected on the right, upward, the range will be minus infinity until four. Easy question. This one is not easy question, unfortunately. The graph of all this is shifted three units down and three units to the right. Find the equation. Now we know if we shift three units down, y will be replaced by y plus three. And shifting three units to the right, you see three units to the right also, x will go to x minus three. So every x up and down here, every x we replace it by x minus three, same numbers, everything. Every y, I put y plus three squared and here y plus three. Say so I leave the minus six, I leave the minus nine, I leave the 15, there is a five here outside. Now you have to simplify, this is the whole idea. See, when you simplify it, you will get this equation, believe it or not. 5y squared is equal to x plus 39. That's the answer. So the whole idea not in the shifting. Shifting is not that difficult if you get the correct numbers here for x and y. So the details, I put all the details, how to simplify from this line to this line on the next slide, please. So you can do it yourself and see if you can get the new equation 5y squared is equal to x plus 39. You have to use the squared, you have to use the formula, a plus b squared, etc., etc., etc. Now, this is, the, this is the continuation of question number two solution, details. So we have this one here, use this formula, a plus b squared, use a minus b squared, do this, x squared, 6x plus 9, minus 6 minus 18, here we have x squared minus 6x plus 9, minus 9 canceled, 5x minus 15 plus 15 canceled. So you have 5x there, take a common factor, x squared. You see, just cancel the x. And here we have 6y is canceled, y squared minus 9. This is a blue, this is a blue. See the blue and blue? Cross multiply the blue. Blue and blue, cross multiply the oceans. So 5y squared minus 45 is equal to x minus 6. Take 45 on the other side. 5y squared is equal to x plus 39. Question number three. We have the function given f of x, x squared minus 2x plus 1. Obtain a function g, this is what we need, by reflecting x, the function f, reflecting the function f in the y-axis shifting two units to the right and shifting one unit down, then shifting in the x-axis after that. So you have to do A, B, C, D, four things to the function f, these transformation to the function f, we obtain g. So the idea is to get g. Now we take this function here, reflect in the y-axis. Remember in the y-axis, every x will be replaced by minus x. So I put minus x and simplify. Then shifting two units to the right, every x I put x minus two there. Then I have to use the formula x squared minus four x plus four, multiply here two x minus four, you get x squared minus two x plus one. Shifting one unit down, every y I replace it by y plus one. 
If I take it on the other side, it becomes minus one. So the function becomes x squared minus two x. Then after we finish, we make a reflection in the x-axis. In the x-axis, we multiply the whole function by minus. So this will be minus x squared plus two x. That is g. Really nice, interesting question. Now, number four, not difficult. We have a function square root. We have some transformation inside. We have to graph it, find x-intercept, y-intercept, domain, and range. You can find x-intercept, y-intercept before you graph it, better. Domain or range after you graph it. Remember here, there is a little trick in this minus. You see this minus x plus four? You cannot decide right or left, be careful. If you have only x coefficient one, you can decide. If there is a minus, you have to be careful. See what I do here. Minus x plus four, take a minus common factor. Then in the bracket, we have x minus four. And there is a minus two. See, there is a minus two outside, we leave it. This is down, shifting down. Now, where do I start? I know the square root is this one here. You see, I, I draw here, little basic, basic square root of x is there, you see? Small one here. And then I have the minus, only the minus x. So I take this function here, the first one, and make the reflection in the y-axis. You see the minus, square root of the minus x, the, the inside, the minus x. Now minus, this x, x minus four, it goes to the right like this. See the basic, the basic is this one. You reflect in the y-axis, this one. Then you take it on the right. Then the last one minus two down, this is the final graph. You see, look at the final graph. It's not easy to get the final graph. You can go by steps here. Always this is a nice method. Start with the basic, look at the reflection, then see the shifting. Now you can find x intercept let y zero, y intercept let x zero, the domain minus infinity until four close, the range from a minus two up all to infinity on the y axis. Number five, describe how the graph, this one here, can be obtained from this graph. Y equals square root of x minus two plus two. We start with this. That's our aim here. So we start with this. So the given here, I start there. I can reflect the graph in the x-axis, the whole equation. So I multiply the whole by minus. See, the whole one reflected in there because I need this minus. See, I need, this is the aim, remember? See, the aim is given here, that's the aim, minus two, square root of x plus two, minus three. So I have to go step by step, multiply the whole by minus in the reflection in the x-axis. So it becomes minus square root of x minus two, minus two. Now stretching, you have to multiply by two because I need two there. So it becomes minus two square root minus four. Then I need plus two inside, but here I have minus two. So shift four units to the left. So every X becomes X plus four because X plus four, when you add it to minus two, you get X plus two, that's the aim. Just remember, look at the aim and do. Look at the aim and apply. Now the last one, we have minus four, we need minus three. So shift up one unit. Up means y will be replaced by y minus one. If you take minus one on the other side, it becomes plus one. Plus one and minus four is minus three. That's our aim. Now question number six, given the graph, and we have seen one example similar. And also we have here f of x is equal to absolute value of x. So that's a v, but there is a reflection here. So we have to discuss everything we have in transformation discussed in lectures 31 and 32, find the equation of this graph. So let's call it capital M, function capital M. We can see this is a V shape because it is absolute value of X. And then the reflection here, we can see there is a reflection. And then also we see minus five. So that means shifted five units to the left, you see on the left. And shifting six units up, so I can write absolute value x plus five, this is on the left, up is plus six, and then I put an a. To find a, I take any point on the graph, this is like one, zero. So x will be one, y will be zero. I find a minus one. 
So only there is a reflection and there is a shifting left and up. This is easy. Determine whether this function is even, odd, or neither. The function is h of x, x squared times absolute value of x divided by cube root of x. You know, we have to replace x by minus x in the original equation. So h of minus x becomes minus x all squared, absolute value of minus x over cube root of minus x. Each one I have to simplify. This one becomes the same. Absolute value of minus x is the same as absolute value of x from lecture number seven, four. This is lecture number four. This is lecture number seven in the algebra course lectures. And there's a minus here. See, the minus will go on the line. So h of minus x is equal minus h of x. See the easy proof here. So h is an odd function. Now question number eight, the graph is given y equals f of x. And we have a function l of x minus half, f of x minus one plus one. We need the domain and range of the function l. We have to sketch it first. So this is the function f. We go one by one, there is a minus half. See the minus means reflection in the x-axis. So the graph becomes here like, like a v there from one to four. Then there is a half here. See, we take only the minus for the reflection. The half is a vertical shrinking. See, it was there minus four, so it becomes at minus two. Then we shift on the right, x minus one. So on the right, one unit. Then we shift plus one, see outside, shifting up one unit. Now the domain becomes one to five after the final graph of the L and the range is minus one to one. You can check it easily, please, and see the answer. Question nine, we have same as question number eight, but here we have only one point. Function f has a point, f of four is equal to minus six. So four and minus six, this is x, this is y. We need the coordinates. Coordinate means x and y of the point on the function g, which is two minus one over three f of x minus three. So we have to take the point, which is four and minus six. See the minus now in the g means a reflection. See this minus here. It means in the reflection, so four, six, becomes here four, six. So four minus six, that's the point here. Reflection becomes on the x-axis four, six. One over three means vertical shrinking. So the y is multiplied by one over three, the y here. So six times y, one over three, that's four and two. Four and two is there. Then two means shifting up here, two. You can put two or at the end of the function, you say plus two. That's the same, shifting up two. So two, shifting up two will be four, four. Now on the right, we shift three units. Four, four, shift on the right three units. So it will be seven, four. That's the point that we need, seven and four. This is the point, seven and four, after we make all these transformation to this point, four and minus six, which was on the function f. Now here we see the answers of all these nine questions. Please, for other examples, if you want to see more and more examples, please, you can see the videos on the algebra course lectures 31 and 32. There are two videos there, 31 and 32 will cover all these ideas in the transformation. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, you can subscribe and share it, please, with your friends. Thank you. I hope I can see you in another video with another topic. Thank you very much.